Hello everyone. Today we begin with a new text, an essay by Henry James, The Art of Fiction. This essay has been rightly pointed out as one of the adventures of immense importance to the novel's history. And this was written at a time uh, in, 18, uh, in the 1800s, in 18, uh, towards the end of the 19th century, 1884 precisely, when a novel as an art form, as a literary form was, was still struggling to find respectability, was still finding to receive critical attention in the way the other genres had been receiving. This essay could be seen as a very pointed attempt to place a novel within a proper literary framework with yardsticks and with uh, a lot of respectability, literary respectability if one may say so. So, this is seen as a rebuttal to Walter Besson's uh, essay which has a uh, bears the same title. But the, this essay as we can notice, it begins with a congratulatory note towards uh, uh, Walter Besson. It also acknowledges the ways in which uh, uh, a certain kind of uh, uh, critical attention has been given to this uh, genre, this uh, field of novel. And uh, at some level we can also find that there is a way in which Henry James is trying to uh, articulate, trying to highlight that novel as an art form, it needs a more elusive, a more complex kind of theoretical framework than the one that uh, Besant had been trying to put forward. And there are two influential counter tendencies within which we need to contextualize this work. One is uh, more residual and the other is emergent. And the residual tendency was, uh, was a very conservative, a traditional outlook which uh, had puritanical approaches to all art forms which also uh, tended to, which also had this tendency to see uh, novel as an immoral kind of art form. And as you might be knowing in the 19th century when women were writing novels, when there was a greater visibility to this kind of readership, it was also uh, seen as one of the more one of the immoral exercises that uh, one would uh, indulge in during one's uh, uh, for uh, purely one's pleasure. So, that was not really recommended as something that a, a man or woman of good upbringing would indulge in, in terms of writing as well as reading. So, we find that the other tendency which is more emergent in nature, it is about this uh, omnivorous vulgarization of everything that is uh, uh, modern, everything that is uh, seen as a part of modern commodified culture. So, in that sense, this is a very modern essay as well, which tries to um, look at the process of democratization and tries to look at the positive elements within this uh, commodification. It does not have an inherent moral component about it. This absence of the moral compass also makes this uh, uh, essay extremely interesting and refreshing in multiple ways. This essay, the title itself begins by a sort of a, a defensive campaign, the art of fiction. It is attributing a sense of uh, artness to fiction. Uh, right at the outset in the essay, it, in the title itself, which also sort of uh, 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 bails him out of this entire process of trying to argue that fiction also is an art to be reckoned with. And by investing fiction with artistic qualities right at the outset, he is calling for, he is calling out for a more serious engagement with uh, art in, in, in uh, more objective terms as well and not entirely uh, to see art as a moral framework. Uh, not entirely to see novel as a, a kind of uh, uh, a kind of art form into which morality is always already invested. So uh, we also look at the kind of uh, uh, terms that he is using to talk about art. There is something very encouraging in his having put into form certain of his ideas on the mystery of storytelling. The use of the word mystery over here is extremely interesting. It's a uh, it is a way in which he is trying to bring in the medieval elements of art. He is also trying to tell us that fiction is perhaps the kind of uh, uh, the, the art that we are talking about in this essay. It is something which requires uh, the, the perfect uh, craft which is the combination of long apprenticeship like it is in the medieval times along with the individual genius. So, we find that this point is being pursued, the individual nature of this art form is being pursued in very romantic medieval terms over here by the use of the term mystery over here. And uh, we find that uh, he further sort of romanticizes this before getting into the practical aspects of uh, his discussion. It is a proof of life and curiosity, curiosity on the part of the brotherhood of novelists as well on the part of the reader. So, this is a mystery. So, he is right at the outset telling us that here is an art form which receives a more elusive, a more mysterious and a more complex treatment than the one which was given uh, to it by Mr. Walter Besson in his essay with the same title, The Art of Fiction. 
So, he also says that there is a way in which um, uh, Mr. Besant and the others in their discussions, they have made uh, novel a uh, more discussable kind of uh, uh, an object. There is something uh, debatable about novel that they find it is worthy enough to be discussed within the critical circles, worthy enough to be uh, taken up for serious discussion. And uh, still he says during the period I have alluded to there was a uh, comfortable good humored feeling abroad that a novel is a novel as a pudding as a pudding and this was the end of it. So, there was a time when novel was not really taken seriously up for any kind of discussion and art uh, and, and also these general notions about art lives upon discussion, upon experiment, upon curiosity, about variety of attempt, upon the exchange of views and the comparison of standpoints. And there is a presumption that those times when no one has anything particular to say about it and has no reason to give practice for or preference, though they may be times of genius and not times of development, are times possibly even a little of dullness. The successful application of any art is a delightful spectacle, but the theory too is interesting and although there is a great deal of the latter without the former, I suspect there has never been a genuine dis success that has not had a latent core of conviction. I read this to you again. The successful application of any art is a delightful spectacle, but the theory too is interesting. So, he is vouching. He is. Uh, uh, pressing for a theory of art to emerge in the context of fiction and that is the seminal uh, quality and the seminal advantage of this essay as well. And he is again being very congratulatory in, in a slightly backhanded way as well on uh, Besson's views by saying that he has set an excellent example in saying what he thinks for his part about the way in which fiction should be written as well as about the way in which it should be published for his view of the art carried on into an appendix covers that too. But he is also about to tell us very quickly how he departs from the views uh, uh, put forward by Besant. And um, now he is uh, uh, very directly coming on to this old superstition about fiction. It must take itself seriously for the public to take it so. The old superstition about fiction being wicked has doubtless died out in England, but the spirit of it lingers in a certain oblique regard directed toward any story which does not more or less admit that it is only a joke. So, this is the residual tendency that he is trying to counter over here and fiction has always faced these uh, counter tendencies uh, within England and about uh, fiction being immoral, about fiction being wicked and hence not really uh, compatible for uh, people of good upbringing. And this old evangelical uh, hostility to the novel as he puts it, which was as explicit as it was narrow and which regarded it as little less favorable to our immortal part than a stage play was in reality far less insulting. The only reason for the existence of a novel is that it does compete with life. So, here is a kind of theory being put forward to talk about realism. We would find the uh, images of uh, the, 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 the earliest kinds of discussions about realist art, about realist fiction in Henry James essay The Art of Fiction. So, this combination, this comparison with life makes this theory all the more interesting and as he says mysterious and elusive too in multiple ways. And he says that there are various ways in which you could make different comparisons with fiction because history also is allowed to compete with life. As I say, it is not any more than painting expected to apologize. So, there is a way in which fiction stands apart compared to other art forms, other disciplines. Uh, it is not history, it is not painting. So, there is certainly a different purpose altogether that fiction sets out to achieve and here he is talking mostly about realist fiction and we find that there is a way in which fiction in spite of its fictitious quality is being seen as closer to life, as closer as competing with life vis-a-vis -vis, say uh, a painting or uh, uh, history like he uh, successfully puts it. Certain accomplished novelists have a habit of giving themselves away which must often bring tears to the eyes of people who take their fiction seriously. I was lately struck in reading over many pages of Anthony Trollope with his want of discretion in this particular. Yeah, so, he says this aspect of making believe is also part of fictional writing and 
still it is not history it is something more complex than that something more alluring and something more mysterious than that and he is also countering this very popular observation this uh, almost like a superstition one could say it has never occurred that a novel ought to be artistic and this is the point that henry james wants to take forward he wants us to see the artistic element in fiction he wants us to see fiction as an art form with techniques with craft with mystery and of course the combination that he uh, wants to highlight uh, with this use of the term mystery it is a combination of a long apprenticeship along with individual genius it is hard work as well as individual genius at work and at the same time he is also very much conscious of what to keep at bay because he feels that like Besant if uh, one gets too preoccupied with certain aspects such as superficial aspects such as form you are likely to lose the essence entirely uh, in his own words literature should be either instructive or amusing and there is in many minds an impression that these artistic preoccupations the search for form contribute to neither end interfere indeed with both they are too frivolous to be edifying and too serious to be diverting and they are moreover priggish and paradoxical and superfluous and that is what he wishes to counter as well that the importance is not the importance should not be on these superficial elements such as form or structure or even the moral compass that Besant seems to be concerned about but there's something um, very lifelike about fiction that makes it uh, mysterious and uh, complex as uh, uh, we, we would uh, as he would continue to reiterate and he's also trying to counter some of the popular assumptions about novel certainly this might sometimes be doubted in presence of the enormous number of fiction a number of works of fiction that appeal to the credulity of our generation for it might easily seem that there could be no great substance in a commodity so quickly and easily produced there is an ease which has always been uh, accorded to the production of a novel in comparison to any other uh, in any any other artistic form any other genre like poetry or uh, epic or drama and this ease has also been seen as uh, the reason to look down upon novel because anything that uh, could be produced that could be commodified and produced in, uh, in, in with such ease which so quickly and easily it cannot have great substance so that is also the emergent uh, counter voice against the commodification of art and against the commodification of many things during that point of time and Henry James is trying to make a case for novel by also trying to bring out this modern perspective that commodification essentially need not be bad and anything that is produced easily and uh, quickly need not be without substance either. I think however that this injury is only superficial that the superabundance of written fiction proves nothing against the principle itself it has been vulgarized like all other kinds of literature like everything else today and it has been proved more than some kinds accessible to vulgarization and he makes a very direct uh, response or direct rebuttal to Mr. Besant over here he seems to be to mistake in attempting to say so definitely beforehand what sort of an affair the good novel will be to indicate the danger of such an error as that has been the purpose of these few pages to suggest that certain traditions on the subject applied a priori have already had much to answer for and that the good health of an art which undertakes so immediately to reproduce life must demand that it be perfectly free so the main disagreement that uh, Henry James has against uh, Mr. Besant is that Mr. Besant has in mind a set of laws a certain kind of a framework within which he believes fiction should work and that's not how it works Henry James is trying to tell us because it's a mysterious art form and it competes with life you cannot have a set of rules and regulations within which you can force mystery to work within which you can force this art which competes with life to work the only obligation to which in advance we may hold a novel without incurring the accusation of being arbitrary is that it be interesting he sums up its argument over here that the only thing the only uh, thing that one could expect out of a novel in terms of its form in terms of its, its technique in terms of its outcome is that it be interesting that could not be based on any kind of formula that could not be based on any kind of uh, rules guidelines or you know set of regulations that one would set uh, forward and then he gives this uh, definition a novel is in its broadest definition a personal impression of life that to begin with constitutes its value which is a greater or a less according to the intensity of the impression so 
there's something very fluid like about this uh, uh, judgment that Henry James wishes to make that since this is about the impression of life that to a personal impression of life it is difficult for such an impression such a process to work according to set rules and regulations and he therefore says the form is to be appreciated after the fact then in a word we can enjoy one of the most charming of pleasures we can estimate quality we can apply the test of execution the execution belongs to the author alone an outside agent like uh, Mr. Besant cannot dictate the terms of this execution because this is based on personal impression and the author and the uh, author of this work has this entire autonomy to decide on what basis he will execute this. The advantage, the luxury as well as the torment and responsibility of the novelist is that there is no limit to what he may attempt as an executant, no limit to his possible experiments efforts, discoveries, successes and this sort of fluidity, this loose structure is the greatest advantage of novel. Uh, in in uh, one of the later essays uh, that we shall be taking a look at Virginia Woolf's uh, A Room of One's Own, there also she argues that what perhaps prompted more women to write novels in the 19th century was this entire absence of literary tradition, was this entire absence of a set of rules or these uh, uh, rigid guidelines within which they were expected to work and that helped them to break out of the patterns and exp experiment with different kinds of sequences and traditions. Coming back to Henry James, he is uh, in uh, the next passage uh, trying to respond to some of the arguments that Besant had laid out. Besant says at the beginning of this essay that laws of fiction may be laid out and taught with as much precision and exactness as the laws of harmony, perspective and proportion and that is clearly something that uh, Henry James does not uh, agree with. And another one is that the novelist must write from his experience that his characters must be real and such as might be met with in actual life. And the, and the next one is that English fiction should have a conscious moral purpose and this moral compass is something that Henry James continues to uh, disagree with through and through. And uh, he says that whether it is about laying down laws of fiction or about the insistence that the novelist should write from his experience or about this uh, need for a conscious moral purpose, none of this really fit in with the idea of the novel because essentially novel is about a personal impression of life and it needs to be there is certain mystery about it because it is competing with life and it could not be seen within such superficial rigorous and uh, delimiting forms. And while one is talking about reality and he also makes this very pertinent point about experience that experience is never limited and it is never complete it is an immense sensibility a kind of huge spider web. So, he is using romantic as well as practical kinds of considerations to counter the many laws about experience, about form and about uh, the, the kind of moral compass that uh, Besant thinks the uh, art of fiction, the fiction writing should have. And the power of the artist Henry James also believes that is to guess the unseen from the scene, to trace the implication of things, to judge the whole piece by the pattern, the condition of feeling life in general so completely that you are well on your way to knowing any particular corner of it. And uh, uh, as uh, he also says towards the end of that uh, uh, passage, try to be one of the people on whom nothing is lost. And to impose laws on this sort of an art form, which as he points out in the beginning is a mystery and that is also a word that he uses very tersely and very calculatedly I feel and uh, to impose laws on such an art form which is based on such complex lifelike terms is would be uh, ridiculous to say the least and to uh, and given that Henry James is given this uh, giving this uh, definition to uh, novel as something that competes with life and if we go back to the broadest definition to novel that he tried to give it is a personal impression of life constitutes its value which is greater or less according to the intensity of the impression. It's something very personal about it, something very subjective about it which cannot be qualified, which cannot be understood or regulated within the frameworks that Mr. Besant is putting forward. So, in the next uh, uh, few pages and in the next few pages what Henry James is trying to do is to tell us what he thinks about this art of uh, fiction, what he thinks constitutes the uh, 
literariness or what he thinks contributes to the mystery of this uh, uh, new emergent form which needs to be seen outside of experience which needs to be seen outside of uh, uh, any moral compass. So we wrap up with this uh, the first part of this discussion for today I encourage you to continue reading through the remaining parts of the essay and we shall come back to take a closer look at the second half where Henry James also talks about his theory of fiction which has become quite foundational in our understanding of the theoretical conditions pertaining to fiction. I thank you for your attention and I look forward to seeing you in the next session.